on this episode of Bondi Vet. What? We knew it was bad, but this is next level. Can Kate find a solution for a paralysed pug? Waffle is not a surgical candidate, so we're going to have to find some creative ways to get Waffle to live his best life. I found them. I listened to Penny's heart. It's slowed right down and there's an irregular beat. Chris performs a delicate procedure to save a brand new mum. This is the critical moment. If I put the calcium in too quickly, she'll have a heart attack and she'll die. Bit tricky to catch. As soon as we get near him, he darts down and he's up and he's jumping across. And Tim rescues a trapped falcon who's not convinced he's trying to help. Come on, mate, are you going to play nice? It's a standoff. <laughs> Come on, there's your girl. In Sydney, Vet Edwina is on her way to work at Bondi Veterinary Hospital with her 14-year-old pug, Waffle. I got Waffle when he was eight weeks old, so I've had him in my life for 14 years. He means the world to me. We've been through a lot together and he's always been there by my side. Edwina's fellow vet, Kate, also brings her adored elderly dog into work almost every day. Benny, my dog, and Waffle. They're always here. They really are just a part of the furniture. He loves to chase Benny, especially when he thinks Benny's got snacks. They both absolutely love food and they both are completely deaf. We are so used to a Bono Vet Hospital just stepping over them. And these two have the loveliest little bromance. They absolutely adore each other. Would you guys like snacks? <laughs> Hello. Good morning. How are you? Good, how are you? Hey, Waff. But lately, there's been a problem with Waffle's walking. You have to carry him. Yeah, you kind of have to always carry him across the park now. He can't make it across the park no, anymore. He can't make it across. I mean, he used to be able to make it across, but now he just, his little back legs just um, give up. Waffle has an issue with his legs where he's got a defect in the shape of his spine. He was born like that, but over the years, it's compressed on his spine and caused some damage to his spinal cord. And so his back legs, they're just weak. I don't think he has any feeling in these back legs. No, Look at them. Any. Waffle doesn't feel his back legs, so he's not like he's in any pain. But what's happening now is that Waffle can't really even walk properly. So that's starting to become a mobility problem for him. I mean, to be fair, I think Benny's probably also in his category. Like, I don't, I don't think he can make it over the park either. Oh yeah, right. Just old man. Yeah, old boys. It's really hard to watch your dog deteriorate. And I can see an Edwina. There's this Waffle is doing really well and then all of a sudden he's not doing well and I know she's thinking that maybe Waffle, you know, it's almost time to say goodbye to him. Maybe we should take some x-rays of him. Yeah, good idea. That'd be good. Are we going to take some x-rays of your back, Waffy? Yes. I mean, we can do this conscious. He's yeah. good, huh? Yeah. He's a good boy, <laughs> aren't you? You're not going anywhere fast. Come on, let's go do it. Let's do it. It is hard seeing your dog decline. I feel bad for him because I think his quality of life's just not as good as it used to be. I realise he's only got a limited amount of time left, so I just want to spend as much time with him as possible. It's okay buddy, Hello. don't worry. So what we're trying to find with the x-ray is if there has been any changes to Waffle's spine since I last took any x-ray images, which was about a year or two ago. But I just want to make sure that there's nothing else going on. I'll press the button when you're ready. Okay. X-ray! What? I know, it's bad. Yeah. I mean, we knew it was bad, but this is like, that's like next level. Yeah. It's quite amazing that he's still alive. The shape of this spine is actually compressing the spinal cord. And what that means is that Waffle can't feel his back legs. I'd love him just to live forever, but I do worry about him. I think his quality of life, just being able to get around. And he was always such an active dog when he was younger. So for a variety of reasons, Waffle is not a surgical candidate. It's not something that we can do surgery on and all of a sudden he's gonna have a fixed back. So we're gonna to have to find some creative ways to get Waffle to live his best life. His liver's good, his heart's good. Yeah. I still see him as super happy. 
you know, every time he's here, he's such a ray of sunshine. Yeah. It's nice knowing he's not in pain, but I'd love to give him a bit more mobility. You know what? A couple of months ago, there was a little pug that died and the owner had wheels and he donated them to the clinic in amongst this place somewhere. I'm sure there's some wheels and it was for a particular pug. So I wonder if they'd fit him. Let's give it a go. Funnily enough, I guess it doesn't seem a strange idea to put him in wheels for me because, you know, being a vet, it's something we do consider for our other clients. Are you going to get some wheels? Yes. Yes? I know, I have to go find them. I have this really bad feeling that they're actually up in that attic with all the spiders. Oh my goodness. See, there's going to be like snakes and spiders and everything that's going to eat me in this sink. Okay, I can see them. I found them. <gasps> I found them. Oh wow. Yeah, they're upstairs. Oh my God. They look I think perfect. They're, yeah. I mean, they're perfect hug size. They're a bit, they're a bit dusty. Back legs. One and two. There. Yep. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. 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 Whoa. Whoa. Okay. Hold on. We okay. know what we're doing, guys. Take two. Take two. Okay. Wait. Take. Let's just start this again. So far, the dream of waffle whizzing around on wheels isn't looking too promising. Okay. Take three. Okay. One leg and two legs. Good job, Waffy. Down. Good job. Sit. Okay, yep. Okay, ready, Waffy? Do it! <laughs> oh my god, he loves it! So good! You can even go backwards by yourself. Waffle absolutely loves his new wheels. He thinks they're the best thing since sliced bread. Look at you! Oh my God, it's amazing. He's taken to it like a duck to water. Was well, a good boy. This is gonna change Waffle's life. Can we do a circle? <laughs> my God, he's like a pro. He's a pro. I might take him to the park. It's like gonna be the first time he gets to run at the park in like years. I know. It's so nice to be able to give him the opportunity to make him feel like a puppy again. I'm a happy, happy dog mum now. Are you ready? Come on. Come on, you go. Let's go. <laughs> Good boy. It's amazing to see him running around like this again. He just looks so happy, and I think it's just so nice to be able to give him a bit more mobility and freedom. You got it. He's always been such an active dog, and it's just nice to see him back to his old self. <laughs> Woo Good boy. I think that the best part of being a vet is being able to just change an animal's life, even in just a really small way. Sometimes you have to be creative and the main purpose of being a vet is to improve that animal's life as best as you possibly can. And I think that we achieved that today. Good boy. Sounds like this cow has milk fever now. This is a condition I've heard about but never ever seen in real life. What I do know about it though is it makes the cows incredibly unpredictable, so this could be a real challenge. How are you? I'm Chris. Jenny. Hey Jenny. Nice to meet you. You too. Uh, this is it's Penny, is it? Yes, Penny. You relax, it's okay. Penny has just given birth to a bull calf and the new mother can't get up. Is she a little bit temperamental at the moment? Ah, uh, she is actually, yes. Yeah. It's a bit of a hard carving. Owner Jenny is extremely worried. Milk fever is a life-threatening condition that affects new mums. These cows produce a lot of milk all of a sudden just when they're coming into delivering their calf. All that calcium going straight into their udder means they become quite deficient themselves. A lack of calcium in their body means their muscles can't contract. They don't have any strength to get themselves up. So the point of putting this rope around like this is really just to try to keep her still. Because with this condition, the problem is she becomes quite erratic in her behavior. And 
for her to have the best chance of standing up right now, she needs to keep still. Try telling that to a 600 kilo cow. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that I do have her restrained, it's important really that we assess where she's at, make sure she does have milk fever, and then straight away get into fixing it. One of the big telltale signs of milk fever is that there's just absolute silence inside that when there should be constant gurgling, at least every few seconds. Yeah, absolute silence, Danny. All right, so her temperature is barely 37 there. So that low body temperature and the fact that her rumen, her stomach isn't contracting there, yep. it really does look like milk fever. Yep. So what I'd like to do is, is get a, a bag of the calcium and actually run that into a vein. Yep. It's going to be a challenge. Yeah, she's not too happy. So. No, so we'll just see how we go there. I might need a hand. This is the critical moment. If I put the calcium in too quickly, she'll have a heart attack and she'll die. I'm going to try to push her head back here and I'll actually sit on her neck there. Yep. And that should give me a good exposure to a, to a vein. Hey, 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 it's all right, it's all right. No, 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 no. The plan is to get the bag of calcium, put it straight into a vein. From there, it goes into a circulation, into the muscles where she needs it, and hopefully that's enough to help her stand up. So, Denny, I'm just going to whack this needle in the vein right here. Hope yeah. you get the vein. <laughs> you don't look like you've got a lot of faith in me. As long as you get it in the vein, I'll be happy. You know I am actually a real vet. <laughs> Jeez. It's nice to know someone's got confidence in here. <laughs> the Frisian isn't the only concern for her owner. Just give me that there. Jenny is also worried about the city vet. I didn't realise he was an actual vet. I thought Bondi vet was um, just a drama, yeah. I spent five years at uni getting this degree. I didn't spend a couple of weeks at a weekend drama school. Jeez, tough crowd. I'm gonna keep the pressure on, on her neck, but just make sure that doesn't pop out. I just wanna listen to her heart from here. Calcium can have a really toxic effect on the heart if it goes in too quickly. It's nice and steady. If that heart slows down, starts missing beats, or worse still, stops, the calcium has to stop as well. Chris said if the heart rate drops, it could drop that low, she could might die. So yeah, it is a bit dangerous. Are we halfway through that bag yet? No, it's running a bit slow. Yeah, that's all right. Slow's good. Just ease off a bit there, Jenny. It's just starting to get a little bit faint, a little bit slow there. All of a sudden, I listen to Penny's heart. It's slowed right down and there's an irregular beat. It's time to stop or she'll die. So, I'm gonna pull that. She's just reached a limit giving that calcium intravenously, so anytime you hear those beats starting to, to change, to go a bit quiet, to slow down, or to become irregular, you know it's time to stop. Penny's treatment isn't finished because the rest of that bag now goes underneath the skin. That way she'll slowly absorb it and there's no risk of her heart having any sort of problems. All right, so that's emptied out that bag there. If the calcium treatment has worked, it should take effect immediately. This is where it's going to get really interesting. You're ready to jump? Yeah. So I want to get the halter off. I'm going to do the leg first, then the head. Yep. Then we're both going to run, hold each other <laughs> and hope. All right. Yep. I know you've been through a lot. Some people here think I'm an actor. So let's understand we've both been through a little bit. All right. So let's get this rope off. I couldn't agree more. OK. Hey, 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 hey. Settle down, settle down, settle down. Settle down. Here we go. You can get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's up, she's up, she's up. Yes. Tail, tail, tail. Got it. All right. <laughs> There we go. Amazing. You wouldn't think that a little clear bag of liquid would be enough to get a 600 kilo cow to a feet, but it's worked its magic. Bob's going to take after mum here. Oh, oh. 
Come on, little buddy, come on. <laughs> nice work. First steps. Amazing. So, Mum's got up, and now son has as well. Had your doubts, but look. Yeah, good job. Are you happy with that? Yep, yeah, very happy. Not a bad job for an actor. <laughs> Logie Award winning? Yeah, Logie. Or Academy Award winning? Logie. Just a Logie? Just a Logie. I'll still take it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it hasn't been a bad day to see a big cow in trouble actually stand up with the help of the calcium and then see a calf take its first steps. It's pretty special. Hopefully now Jenny realises that I'm a vet. In Kyabram, the mum that Chris saved from milk fever is back at work. Penny's up, she's um, milking and down with the herd and doing really well. Come on, fella. Get one. <laughs> and her little calf is happy in the nursery. He's recovered real well too and he's playing and jumping around happy as Larry. After her initial reservations, owner Jenny is finally convinced about the boy from Bondi. I think he might be a vet now. <laughs> Heading to the Richmond practice is Texan-born Molly and another American import, Smitty. Hey, Scott. Morning, Molly. Good morning, morning. Smitty. In a few weeks, Molly is planning to fly home to the States for Christmas, but she's worried the trip may have to be postponed because Smitty's having trouble with one of his back legs. Hey, did I spy him skipping you did. on the way in? You did. It's getting worse. The first time I noticed something was really wrong, I was at the park with Smitty, and all of a sudden he was uh, limping on his back right leg. First of all, I'd like to just see him have a little walk, if that's sure. okay. Come on. Yeah, he's really holding his leg out, Molly. Yeah. It's clear that Smitty's knee is getting worse, and that is a really hard thought, because I just hate the idea of having him feel pain. All right, little man, let's, let's have a look at you. Hello, buddy. Hello, sweetheart. You okay? Hey, he is such a good boy. He's always he really such a is. good little dog. A real sweetheart. Now, what I'm going to do now is just have a little feel of this knee and just see if we can see the, yeah, look, you can see that knee popping in and then, boop. Yeah. Pops in and it pops out. And it's actually now living out of yeah. the groove more often than it's living in. Right. It is not even trying to stay where it's supposed to stay. Okay. So that's why that you've seen the progression of the clinical signs, the skipping. We'll see more rubbing, we'll see more arthritic change, and those things I can't reverse. But what we can do right now, if you're feeling brave, is actually perform a surgery so that the kneecap no longer pops out. Okay. And that we stop the progression of the arthritis here. If we didn't perform surgery on Smitty, he would slowly but surely develop more and more arthritis in that joint. It would become more painful, it would seize up, and eventually he may not even be able to use the leg. I know it needs to be done. I hate to put him through it just because I don't see visible pain, but I do see that it's getting worse. So I'm ready to, to, to do it. Oh, little guy. It's OK, right. little buddy. Molly's obviously apprehensive at putting poor little Smitty through surgery. Fair enough, it's a big procedure we're gonna to have to do, but it has really important long-term benefits. And I think it's a case of a short-term pain for a long-term gain. Thank okay, champ. You. You're coming with me now, my friend. That's a good boy. Oh, no, I'm not. I know. You're going to miss your mummy, aren't you? All right. Bye, buddy. Say bye, mummy. Bye, Smitty. Say, see ya. No more skipping for you. Bye, Smitter. Let's turn his eye so off for a sec. Nurses Emma and Nathan are preparing little Smitty for surgery. Let's just move him up a little bit. One, two, three. I've just got Smitty on the table and I'm just really hoping that the knee looks okay when I get in there. I'm really hoping I won't see arthritic change, which would have a massive impact on his future. So I'm ready to make my first incision. So his kneecap, which is sitting here, you can see that's it popping out. So thankfully for him, can you see that Ems, there's virtually no arthritic change there? Already? Oh, that's very good. 
I love orthopedics. It is one of my favorite things to do. Everyone takes the mickey out of me around here. They call me the orthopod and the favorite line is, Emma does love a good bone. So this does look a bit gruesome. But you don't tend to like taking a hacksaw to a dog unless you have to. So there, we now have a groove. The surgery I needed to perform on Smitty was actually deepening the groove that the knee sits in and also tightening the tissues around the knee so that once I put the knee back where it should be, it'll stay there. Smitty's owner, Molly, is upstairs, anxiously waiting for the operation to finish. You never think you're going to be this nervous about your dog going into surgery, but um, it's nerve-wracking for me. It's scary. Molly's booked to return home to the States for Christmas, but those plans will depend on Smitty's recovery. He is my baby. I don't have kids, so Smitty is definitely my family. You can actually see that that's wanting to stay where it should. The good news for Molly is that the surgery has gone exactly as Scott planned. That's uh, set in beautifully. I'm loving my work on that one. All right. Then we need to work on your modesty, Scott. <laughs> I went to modesty classes once. I was the top of the class. I was literally oh, the best know. one there, yeah. <laughs> Why doesn't that surprise me? It's not the nicest thing to go through, but uh, it's no pain, no gain. And this is going to give him quite a lot of gain in the future. It's great news for Smitty because it means now he shouldn't skip or limp anymore. There shouldn't be any rubbing causing further arthritic change. Good result. Well done. Hopefully Molly will be happy. To be able to say to a worried owner, your dog's fine and he's going to live a pain free existence. Perfect. Oh, There's mummy. Hey, baby. Hi, sweetie. Oh, you're okay. Oh, you're doing okay. It was a little heartbreaking seeing Smitty drugged up, bandaged up, clearly not himself. Pulls at the heartstrings for me, but I'm really anxious to get him home. Any damage on the bone that was made by the rubbing? Absolutely none. Really? Yeah, absolutely Yay. none. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. It was so oh, I'm smooth. I'm so glad I did this when I did. So that's it really good. does so mean So it's just it. full recovery. That's right. Yeah, that's, that's what we've got to look forward to. Is Great. Smitty will need to stay in overnight for observation. You're OK. But Scott's confident that he'll recover quickly enough for that flight back home to Texas. I think it's great that we've done this before you go so that yeah. you can settle into a new life in Texas. Yeah. Um, and fingers crossed you won't need me anymore. I know. Fingers <laughs> crossed. Let's hope. All right. Well, that's just great news. I'm very happy. Yeah. Oh, hello. That sounds like Smitty. <laughs> Hello. Hello! And Scott is making a <laughs> Skype call to Texas. Hi, mate. Smitty recovered quickly enough from his knee operation for Molly to get back home for Christmas. Who is that, Dr. Scott? Is that Dr. Scott? Don't worry, he can't do anything. <laughs> Luckily, scalpels don't go via Skype. It's fine. That's right, that's right. But he's just, he's a happy, happy little dog and he's doing phenomenal. I think he likes being back in Texas. It's so lovely to see Molly again, even if it is just through a screen, but Smitty seems to be walking really well on that knee. Life in Texas seems to be really agreeing with him. I've forgotten how beautiful he looks. You know what he looks a little bit like? A baby seal, I think. He's got those beautiful big brown eyes, doesn't he? He does, doesn't he? When he gets those eyes going, when he wants something. Smitty. 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 Hey, mate. Oh, wait oh my goodness. Normally, as a vet, you get to see your patient over and over again. But in this case, Smitty was jetting all the way back to Texas with Molly. But I'm hoping they're going to have a fantastic and very comfortable Christmas now and many more to come. All right, Molly, lots of love. All right, thank Take you. Take care. Yeah, have a great Christmas, Smitty. Take care. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Obes, we've got a bird of prey in a factory down at Mans Road. Can you grab nets and gear ASAP? I'll meet you in the car park. Yeah, no problem, mate. I'll grab it now. Let's go. Australian Reptile Park Operations Manager Tim Faulkner is responding to an emergency call-out. Workers at a nearby factory called Tim 
after a bird of prey flew into their warehouse and became trapped. G'day, how you going? I was up here when I rang you, but she's over in the factory she's now. She's gone in the factory. All right, we might go in and have a bit of a look. Where did you see her last? Right, right there. Peregrine. It's a young bird. Guess that it's probably just left the nest and why it's in here and why it's not flying, don't know. I knew it was a falcon, but I didn't realise it would be a peregrine now. No, that, that was a bit of a surprise, that. After all the years I've been here, I've never seen one of these birds around here. I thought he wouldn't last the night if he got away, so we're really happy to see you guys come down and pick him up. That left wing's dropped. It's flying, but you can see there that that left wing's hanging out. Now, that could mean that he's actually copped a hit and therefore the wing drops down because it's sore. We need to have a look at him. Got him trapped up there. No problems with his legs. <laughs> he's quick, he's agile. As soon as we get near him, he darts down and he's under the cupboards and then he's up and he's jumping across and a bit tricky to catch. Don't go up there, mate. <laughs> right, yeah. It just can't fly. I think it just needs a bit of space to get its flight up. Right. Yeah, we're right, mate. Cheers. Yeah, I realised that he wasn't going far, just the way he's scratching himself and trying to flap his wings. To be sitting around, especially in a yard like ours, is unusual. He's running around like a rat. He's looking up at you. Finally, Tim and Obi managed to capture the exhausted falcon. Is he all right? Oh, he's got the feet straight up. <laughs> ah, so after a bit of a struggle, the bird is in and under everything, we got him. And then we need to have a look at him. Oh, what's that? Is that an injury? Not sure what that is. It's strange at the moment, he's really quiet, but he's just scared, he's petrified, he's lost, he's in a factory. I would guess that he's not long left mum and dad and fled from the nest, and it's quite common for a lot of birds that he's just struggling. The falcon will be taken back to the Australian Reptile Park for further tests. But first, Tim wants to introduce the intruder to the factory owners. They were peeping through the door, have you got him, have you got him? I think they'd like to see him. <laughs> Is that kind of yeah? Yeah, yeah. Have, you, have you seen mum and dad at all? No. No? No. no. There's a seagull go over every evening, but I've never seen, seen no. one. I've been here 50 years, I've never seen one. Yeah. No Can you see him locked on there? Once that vision locks onto something, he's on it. He doesn't move. The body pivots, and the next day still. All right, well, he's, he's lucky anyway. We'll give him a bit of food and get him back up, and, and then we'll let him go. For that. No worries. No Thanks worries. for the call. No worries. See ya. See you, yeah, we just felt really sad that he looked really helpless. Yeah, at least it's got a good ending. Come on, mate, we'll get you home. Come on, mate, are you going to play nice? It's a standoff. <laughs> Can you um, do me a favour? Just let him see you through the back. Just put my finger in there. Turn around, mate. Maybe put your face there. That's uglier. Turn around, buddy. There we go. Good boy. You all right? Yep. He's got to have a name. What's your name, mister? All oh, right. Yeah, yeah, I got that. Squawky. His name's Squawky. Tim is concerned the malnourished hey. Squawky may be suffering from an injured wing. Down at the factory, I saw something under that, that one. Yeah, do you want to hold his head for one sec? See that? It's, it doesn't look like... Uh, I think it's just a bit of poo. So Squawky's been cleared of any structural damage, but he's not happy with his new friends. Squawky's a handful. He is noisy. Much as I love him, it hurts my ears. Oh, you don't like Uncle Obi? Oh, no, I don't like him either. Don't look at him, man. You don't have to look at him. You don't have to look at him, that's it. Come on, mate. What Squawky needs now is rest and food. But will he accept Tim's hospitality? There you go. I reckon you could hand feed him. Yeah, we'll try. Oh, man. So, I didn't think he'd be a part of hand feeding. Here you go. The way they hunt is they can fly at 300 k's an hour and they ram into, let's say, a pigeon and he stuns it 
He then grabs it with his talons. He'll fly with the pigeon to a perch and then pick pieces off. Go on. You gotta learn how to do this, mate. Maybe that's your problem. I'm trying to give him a bit of food, but he's a bit freaked out from the whole thing, but I persisted. Good boy. Ah, oh, look at that. It's all right. Hey, it's like he took a big breath. Ah, and he realises this dude's not gonna hurt me, and he's taking food, and that's what we want. We want him to eat. There you go. There you go. He, he is starving. He's eaten twice what we'd expect a bird of prey to eat on any given day, so he really needed this food. He was very lucky that people found him and that we found him because fox, cat, it was a one-way street for him down there. We'll leave this here for you. Here you go. We'll see you tomorrow. You get some rest. Hi, mate. You look good and healthy. It's been long enough, mate. It's time for you to go. It's been a couple of weeks and Squawky is a different bird. Good bird. To start with, he was weak and he was a young bird and put simply, just couldn't fend for himself. He didn't find enough food. So that was an easy case to fix because we provided food, shelter, a bit of TLC and he's strong. I can feel your stronger. Hey. We know a beautiful little spot that's only about a kilometre away from where we actually captured him. We're going to let him go there because it's a good spot. We know there's birds around, which is what falcons eat, and it's just a good environment where there's no cats, there's no cars, and it's the best start for him. Here we go. Hey, he knows. The ultimate goal is for Squawky to get over this little hurdle and then find a mate, have chicks of his own, and that's what it's all about. Up he goes, keep going. Look at him go all the way. Straight through the bushes and gone. No stopping. That was good. That Maggie come right down and try and hit him. Yeah. That was good, but oh, to start with, I thought he was Did going go, down. He just and it, Yep, he picked up. Well, that's nice to let him go. Yep. Not every day we get to do that. And he, he took off, no looking back. How good does that feel? Hi, I'm Dr. Danny. If you enjoyed this video, then please remember to subscribe to the Bondi Vet YouTube channel. Click on the screen now to continue watching more great content. And if you love Bondi Vet, then check out our Bondi Pet Marketplace at bondipet.com for a great range of Aussie pet products and services. We can't wait to see you there.